Now, if you look at the if you look at the proportions on a on a real spinner, especially like trichos, at least half the body when they're when they're when they're spent is the wing. If you look at the silhouette, they're laid out. So when you tie a single, just a regular, how do they tie a regular spinner with just one one wing out? What you end up with is like three quarters of the body, and then you get this real skinny little wing. So what these guys have come up with is that they tie this double wing, where there's a wing here, a wing here, but when it's all molded, it comes together, you get that nice big silhouette, and, it, and you get a much better, better profile than you would otherwise. They even tie a triple wing, which is a real pain in the ass, because this is bad enough. But uh, <laughs> so, so that's opposed to trying to tie a larger chunk of, of wing. That's no, that still doesn't here. work. That still doesn't work because what you're getting, the 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 broadest part of the wing is at the body. Not right. right. So if you tie one single wing, it's like a it bow tie, right? Out, yeah. So it flares at the tip, but you don't get anything at the body. Whereas if this one, you get it, you get that whole section into like half the half the fly is, is where the wings come out. So and it's and you can trim them however you want. So no matter how fat you make a single wing, it's, it's still narrow at the right, narrow yeah. at the you know, at the at the body, but it's sticking way out. And they work fine. I mean I've I've worked them but this this these really do work pretty well. Uh, and the tying part is all the same to, up to the first wing and then what happens is you leave these wings long and then when you go to tie the second wing in, your thread's getting wrapped up in that because this the the stuff I'm using is just like really gnarly and it you know and it gets everything it's really frustrating. So there's a little bit of a trick that I've used that helps uh, with that part of it. So spinners are very their abdomens are very thin, not like a done because they're actually all their energy is gone out of their bodies, and their you know their their egg mass is what pretty much fills up their abdomen. So, so they're when they're spent, they're really thin. So, I don't put any dubbing on the back. And what I'm going to do, we're going to split the tails, and you don't actually have to split the tails, but they look kind of cool. And that's how when spinners fall, they're, they're either two or three tails are are actually splayed out, and their tails are real long. And I don't tie them that long because I don't I think the for one thing, the fish sometimes they'll bump them out of their mouths with those stiff tails on them, so no time quite as long as the real thing. But the reality is, the body of a spinner, the abdomen of a spinner, about the, is actually thinner than the hook he's tying. Yeah, it's about the profile of the hook. The hook is actually thicker than the, than the actual insect. So, so at this point, normally I would I would start something up toward the hip, the front. But on this fly, I'm going to start right at the, right over the barb. And I'm going to build up a little ball of thread right there. Yeah. And then I'm going to come forward about the middle of the hook. <coughs> what we're using for the tails are these, uh, I call them five bets. What they basically are is paintbrush, paintbrush uh, bristles. A lot of guys are now also using Leon. Cocktail works good too. I think these are a little more durable, but Cocktail yes. works, works really well. I like, I, I use that a lot too. Uh, well, for this, I'll buy use a paintbrush in the right color, and you'll have enough for three lifetimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the tails on the spinners are actually kind of clear, but yeah. so this is how this stuff, how this stuff comes. Now I'm gonna. The spinner's only got either two or three tails. I use I use usually use four, two on a side. It's a little more support in there. It makes it a little harder to tie, but so what you want to do is you want to pull off four too, because you want to it's it's easier if you get an even number. <coughs> so you kind of go blind trying to trying to separate these guys. So I've got four. Well, you can, if the tips aren't even, you can, you can actually cut these butts off, and then you can actually put them in a stack or they'll stack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna typically a, a spinner tail would be about twice the length of the body for the real thing, but I'm not gonna make them that long. And I, sometimes I think you know these things are so stiff that when a fish goes to hit them, that it'll, it'll kind of push it out. So I'm gonna make them about the, the length of the body, and I'm gonna lay this right on top of the the hook shank. 
going to get a couple wraps, two or three wraps, tie it down. Now, here's, you get the frustrating part. You want to split them two and two. And the first thing I'm going to do is pull them over to one side and the other. So I'm going to take the one on my side, I'm going to kind of pull it down, I'm going to take some thread and I'm going to put some pressure on it. I'm going to take the other side and put it to the other side, put some pressure on it. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is forcing these fibers to both sides of the, of the hook shank. I want them on both on the very, very sides. Once you get them started, it's not too bad. And you don't have to have real tight wraps yet. So as I work my way back, I'm working up to that ball of thread. I'm just about there. When I get to that ball of thread, that forces those tails out when I get up tight up against it. See how that's spread them out now? Now, I'm just going to make my body with thread from there up. I'm just going to kind of taper this thing out. Cut the butts off. Taper in there. Do you want to make it pretty thin? And I'm going to end about in the middle of the, middle of the hook shank. Now at this point, I'm going to put some flex cement on there, and lock everything in place. Okay. So what I like to use for the wing, there's two things, and I think they're exactly the same material. That is true. Got EP fibers, and I've got high vis, and I can't. Man, they look identical to me, except this costs way more than this does. You get twice as much out of here. I think it's almost. I think it's exactly the same material. I can't tell any. I can't tell the difference when I when I've looked at it really close. Now you can use Zelon, you can use uh, poly yarn, but. Poly yarn doesn't have the sparkle, and I think that's the whole thing. You want that that glow when the when the light hits it. The EP fibers are actually used it's kind of a salt water material, but mm -hmm. so what I do, I just take, I just buy the EP fibers and I just whack off, you know, whack off a chunk. So what I you don't want too many fibers. You're probably oh, I'm guessing. 10 or, 10 or 15 fibers for each for each wing is more than enough, depending on the size of the fly you're going to tie. So I'm just going to pull off a hunk, and I'm just going to tie it down, and I'm going to I'm going to figure eight it, tie it down, get it where I want it. I want to start about in the middle of the hook. I'm going to leave it long. If you try to work this stuff short, it's really problematic. And you can see this stuff is kind of kinky, so that's where the that's where the fun begins. So I'm going to get it lashed down here pretty good. Three or four wraps, and then I'm going to leave it long. So now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dub around this one. This is, my, this is my first wing. Now you can tie both wings on and then try to dub in between it, but then you got all this big mass there and it's like, it's a real kick to do that. And here you don't need this, this can, this, you want this fairly sparse to it. You don't want it real, real full. And this is the, this is where the super fine really comes in because you can walk it on your thread and you don't have to keep spinning it because you, you get in between this EP fibers and it gets starts hanging up on you. So I can slide it down, and I cross over, come in behind a little bit.
that's the calabeta, so it's a pretty good sized. You got a good sized fly. Dubbing in here. Okay. So the trick here now is I try to tie that other wing on. I gotta fight this wing trying to figure eight it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a piece of ten thousandths lead. And I'm gonna pull this wing back. Come in here. And I'm gonna wrap it down. Out of my way. Now I can come in here and put my second wing on and not have to fight that that first bunch. Now is your second wing that you're putting on about the same yeah. amount of fibers as the first yeah, wing? Yeah, about the same, yeah. Okay. I mean I, I could count them I guess, but well, I said about. Yeah. yeah. And this this one may be a little fuller when it needs to be, but we'll see. So I'm going to lay this one in right where that dubbing ended. I got one crazy wild fiber here that's going to give me trouble. <coughs> you want to end up about an eye width back from the eye for your head? Yeah. So if you did the, three wings, you'd start the first one back further? Yeah, or, or get them closer together, because you basically want about about 50%, you know. Okay. But I'm not sure it's that critical, but... Yeah, try three, that's a real... <laughs> that's a real treat. <laughs> I guess this two is bad enough two for those bad. who've never two done it. Two is bad enough. You torture yourself. Yeah. I, if the fish really cared that much, I'd say, yeah, go for it. You know? They do it on trico to trichos, man. They're like over 50% of the wing. The wing is, yeah, the is huge. They're just a fat little body, and, and their wings are way out of proportion for what they want. If you look at an actual trico, its tails are absolutely, I mean, they're yeah. like three times as long as the whole fly is. And the bodies are just... And the body small. is like three eye lengths wide or long. I mean, it's just really tiny, and all the rest is thorax and wing. You know, that's a tough hatch, like on the on the Oahe, there's millions of them yeah. come down. Sometimes the, you'll get a female done hatch at the same time you get the you get the the spinners falling and it's just like, uh, you know, how do you fish the thing? Sparkle down. Yeah, or a, or a hopper. <laughs> These hoppers are ants sometimes, you know, uh, doing that, so. Those locals don't throw anything but 12 inch streamers. I know, some of those guys. Although, you know, I ran into a guy there, a local, and all he fished was dry fly, man. He was yeah. with a three weight. I'm thinking, holy crap, you got a 28 inch Yeah, you got a 28 inch fish, wow. man, and you're. Those, those guys are strong, too. Remember the guy we talked to? Yeah. yeah. Teacher. He, 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 he worked for the. For the. Prison, prison man. <laughs> yeah. He worked for the prison. On your size 22s, do you still uh, dub the thorax, or do you just use thread for that as well when it gets that small? On the thorax? Yeah. Yeah, you can dub them. See how this kinky this stuff is? You got, they got this one wild, this one wild fiber here, man. It's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. This ain't going to be the prettiest one, but you can do the same thing and pull this wing back. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I'm probably a little longer on this wing. I think could have started a little shorter, but anyway, then I and then you can comb them out. And then you want to cut them to length, and you want the, the length will be about the length of the body. And what you can do is just bring them up. Can you see that? Just bring them up. What you don't want to do with this stuff is stretch it real tight because when you cut it, then it's going to get shorter. So you want to just pull it to where it's you got a little tension on it to where you can cut it, but you don't want to really put a lot on it. And I'm just going to cut it straight, straight across. So 
fine print. Okay, so then I'm, I'm at that point. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to my I'm going to cut this kind of on a 45 to, from the from the bar to about here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. up here in the eye and kind of get that mayfly mayfly shape out of it and you can keep trimming them as much as you want you can just go for it just remember you can you can always cut more but you can't put any more on so, so there's kind of a fine line there you know but you can kind of thin them out and if you got some Crazy ones hanging down, you know, trim them out of there. But uh, that's it. But see, see how that, see how that stuff sparkles too. Mm -hmm. Poly yarn won't do that. It's just kind of dead, kind of more opaque. Where this stuff uh, really, really, really shows. Sure you guys all paid attention was how he held back the first wing, gave himself space to tie in the second wing. Yeah, a lot. He didn't do that. And I tried to do it the first time. Try to do it without back. without holding them back like that, man. I mean, here that stuff is like <laughs> it grabs it grabs the thread every time you try to. And when when you get dubbing on there, it just makes it even worse. Yeah.